video, all the properties together, one through seven. Now let's start with some negative exponents, two to the negative two. Remember when you have a negative exponent that technically the whole thing is over one right now, so the two to the negative two has to move to the denominator. It becomes positive when it moves to the denominator, and we replace it with a one in the numerator. That simplifies to one fourth. Number two, the B has a positive exponent, so it's happy where it's at. The A is not, so I'm going to move the A to the denominator, make it positive right next to the B, and replace it with a 1 in the numerator. Second one here, negative 3 to the negative 2. Now, first, let's do with the exponent and make it positive. It's all over 1 here, so I'm going to move that down to the numerator. Negative 3 to the positive 2 power with a 1 over top. Now, negative 3, the whole quantity squared, is just 9, which is simplified to 1 over 9. Simple problem. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. All right, number 5. Let's move things. We don't like negatives. Let's move everything first, and then we can simplify. So the x is the only one that's happy. So x to the 4th stays put. The 3 cubed comes down to the bottom, so I'm going to make it 3 to the positive third, and the y moves up to become positive. Now when we simplify, you don't have to write 1, so it's just y. Um, 3 cubed, I'm going to put that in front, is 27x to the fourth, and that's your final answer. Number 6, 3.75 to the 0, that's all with the 0 power, equals 1. Alright, x to the negative fourth is negative, he's not happy, move him up to the numerator. Move, make that x to the positive fourth, remember over one, but we don't have to write the over one when it's in the denominator. So x to the fourth is your answer. Um, in eight, d is the only one that's negative, so d cubed stays put in the numerator, d moves to the denominator, and becomes positive. Number nine. S and T are both negative, so they're both going to flip. The S is going to go to the denominator and become positive. The T is going to go to the numerator and become positive. Ten, let's start with the number. Negative five and four is negative twenty. Now the X is negative ten, that's the only one. So X to the negative ten and Y, negative two plus two is Y to the zero. Now remember, anything to the zero power is one. So I don't have to deal with the y's anymore. Let's simplify. Don't let the negative exponent. Be careful. Negative 20 does not have a negative exponent. It's just a negative number. So negative 20 actually stays put. Its exponent is one. The x comes down to the denominator and has a negative exponent. Although, oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I messed that up. Well, let's start over. I, I missed an x up here. Um, x to the negative 10 and x to the 6. I'm sorry. That becomes x to the negative 4. I apologize. And then the same thing with the y. So y is a 0, which simplifies to be just 1. So the negative 20 still stays put. The x to the negative 4 comes down to the bottom to the x to the positive 4. So sorry I missed that x pretty bad. Number 11, start by distributing the negative exponents. Right? Distribute it to the 2, the x, and the y. So you have 2 to the negative 2, x to the negative 12, and then negative 7 times negative 2 is y to the positive 14. Now what has to move? Well, it looks like the 2 and the x have to move. So I'm going to rewrite this as a fraction. y to the 14 stays put. It's positive, like for example. 2 to the negative 2 comes to the denominator, 2 squared, x to the positive 12. And when I simplify that, I just get y to the 14th over 4, x to the 12. Alright, couple more. Number 12. I'm going to leave what's in front the same for now. And then distribute the 3 to each term in the parentheses. So I'll have 3 cubed times n to the negative 12, m to the negative 3. Now let's combine things. 3 cubed is actually 27, so I can pull that out in front. m to the 6, m to the negative 3rd. 
uh, 6 plus negative 3 is positive 3. And then I have n to the first, and a negative 12 is n to the negative 11. Right? The negative 11 for the n is the only guy that has to move. So I'll 27m cubed over n to the positive 11. Right? Number 13, distribute the 2 as the exponent to everything. So I'll 6 squared times p to the negative 2 x to the 8, and p to the negative 4. Now, the next thing I would do, since we learned the rule with negative exponents now, is to move everything. Move everything, make it positive, and then deal with any fraction that's left. So what I have here is the 6 squared is 36, that stays put. <laughs> the x to the 8 also stays put. Now, the p's are going to flip-flop because they're both negative. So it's going to be p to the fourth over p squared. And now you should be able to see that because they're positive, I can then just subtract the 4 and the 2, which would be positive 2, which would stay in the numerator because the numerator has a bigger exponent. So it's going to be 36 p squared over x to the 8. All right, last one. Looks more complicated than it is. Remember, if the whole quantity has an exponent of 0, that means the whole quantity equals 1. All right, there's all your properties, 1 through 7 mixed together. If you need more help, there is an extra exponent rule of practice if you need it.